Welcome to Tea Time with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Tea Time is where I'll share IT related stories or any IT non technical information with you all. I'm drinking my homemade immunity tea with Manuka honey today and thought I'd share with you my one year update since passing the CISSP back in December of 2021 <laughs> and how I'm maintaining my CPE credits requirement for the certification for free and keyword here is free. So grab your tea, coffee, or choice of beverages, and maybe a snack, and let's get started. If you see my CISSP journey, you know I was unemployed when I passed my CISSP. If you haven't seen that video, I'll include that and my CISSP studying tips in the description box below. So I started looking for a job one week after passing my CISSP because I wanted one week of time for myself and relax before my new adventure. This time around, I knew I wanted a more technical job since my previous job as a cyber security analyst was boring me out of my mind. Again, nothing wrong with the position title. It's just the functions that I was doing was very boring, repetitive, and which is not for me. Also, whatever my next role was going to be, I knew I wanted it to lead me toward the path of having a cloud architect or cloud security architect title. My job search in December was a bit slow. I think it was because people were on vacation in December or some company probably have hiring freezes. In the meantime, I was taking it slow and enjoying my time playing or at least catching up with Genshin and playing my new game Animal Crossing. Anyways, I digress. Back to the topic. I found a job a month later as a security and cloud specialist. I get to define and configure the security and cloud landscape of this 500 employees company. I had some experience configuring Intune and Microsoft 365 environment in 2020. So I had a foundation already, which was how I was able to talk and explain myself in an interview and landed the job. I'm a year into this role and I can tell you the learning curve was high, but I love what I'm doing. I'm thankful that I have this position and that a boss who trusts me. Obviously I had to prove myself, but you get the idea. Now the cert definitely does help get your foot into the IT or if not IT security world, but you have to start from the bottom. But I don't think you can land a job like security admin right off the bat unless it's a title without any substance. Either that or it's going to be very demanding because you need to meet the requirements. As for maintaining my CISSP cert with CPE and CPE stands for continuing professional um, education. I'm going to share from the point of view of a certified ISC Square member as of April 2023 and not as an associate because the requirements are different if you are an associate. And to be honest, I was a bit concerned how I was going to be able to maintain my CPE for free, but it's a lot easier than I thought and I'm going to share it with you. All links will be in the description box below, so check that out. For certified member CPE activities must be completed during the three years of each certification cycle and no later than the certification expiration date end of your certification cycle. Check your CISSP card if you don't know what your expiration date is. If you pass the CISSP as an associate, then the CPE credit requirements is different. They must be completed within their annual cycle instead of the three year period um, based on the CPE handbook. I'm a certified member, not an associate, so I don't know the full rule for associates. It's currently April 2023, as I mentioned, so please do your own research as the policy might have changed when you're watching this video. Whether you're an associate or if you are a certified member. The CISSP CPE requirements for certified members are, again, not for associates. They are one is to pay the annual maintenance fee of 125 US dollar. And two is to meet a total of 120 CPE credits 
in a certification cycle, which breaks down to 90 credits for group A and 30 credits for group A or B. And you can break that down further annually, which is 40 credits for group A and 10 for A and B. A or B, sorry. That way it's make it more digestible instead of you waiting in just the last of the third year to do this all. But you actually don't need credits in group B because it says or. So if you don't want to, you can just stick with group A and satisfy the total of 120 CPE requirement credits. Group A's are directly activities in the area covered by the CISSP domains. Group B includes non-security conferences, courses, trainings, and such. Pretty much professional development activities that are not security related. So on page 12 of the ISC Square CPE handbook, under CPE categories and requirements, there's a plethora of CPE opportunities offered by ISC Square themselves, such as ISC Square certifications course, ISC Square chapter meeting, on and on and on. I'll include the link to this source in the description below so you can read for yourself and pick the ones that best suit you. Then if we scroll down to page 14 here, we see the beginning of the different categories of CPE opportunities that we can earn to satisfy in either group A or B if you don't want to use the ISC Square provided CPE activities or events because you will see here you can earn CPE credits from book, magazine, or white paper, courses and seminars, and a list of other opportunities. This is for group A or B. If we keep scrolling, you can see group A only, group A, continue with group A, and then there's group B. So if you just go through this handbook, you will see the listing for the different group. As for me, I've been watching webinars to satisfy my CPE requirements and one CPE kind of equates to one hour of webinar content. ISC Square and SANS have great free CPE selections. On the ISC Square portal, I normally attend security briefings and sometimes sign up for think tanks online events. They're normally a short 45 to 60 minute session on either the latest technology or security issue. ISC Square partnered with Brighttalk, so CPE credits will be added to my ISC Square members profile five to 10 days after attending the webinar for a minimum of 45 minutes. I think Brighttalk still sends the CPE credit to ISC Square for old Brighttalk webinars, but I'm not 100% sure on this as I haven't tried watching the pre-recorded but based on the ISC Square website, looks like it does. I've only attended the live webinar sessions, so if anyone knows for sure the answer, please put it in the comment section for others to see. As for the SANS website, I've been mostly registering for the cybersecurity webinars and sprinkled a bit of the summit events in my calendar. Since the webinars are normally one hour, it's one CPE credit for each webinar. Now, the summit event are a bit more lengthy, around six hours. Even though the summits are free, some require a checkout process. This one that I'm showing here for the SANS AI Cybersecurity Summit doesn't require checking out, but just a simple click to register with a SANS account. Maybe because it's shorter with only three hours of content, as we can see here that this event is from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. for my time zone. The Ransomware Summit, however, has six CPE credits and requires the checkout process of $0. I want to note that the SAN CPE credits have to be submitted manually. To do this, just download the CPE certificate of events that you have attended from your SANS account dashboard under my webcast. The certificate tells you how many CPE credit it's worth. Open the event on a different tab so you can copy over the event info. Then go to the CPE portal on your ISC Square profile 
Under New CPE, type in or select the date of that CPE event. Click Continue, select Online Webinars, fill in the required details. I'm going to copy and paste here, then upload the CPE certificate. Save and continue. Choose the domain that the webinar satisfied. You don't have to be 100% accurate here. Then save and continue. Finally, review the CPE submission, click submit, and you're done. But I'm not going to submit it here since I've already submitted it earlier. You can check if it's been accepted by going to your CPE list. As you can see here, mine has been accepted. As for how I stay on top of my CPE, I set a quarterly reminder for myself and make sure that I'm on track. I also set some time to register for upcoming webinars every other month. I make sure to keep tab on it so it doesn't lapse because I'm not going through that studying process for the CISSP again. Yeah, not, not doing that. Please, please, please. Don't wait to the last minute to satisfy your CPE requirements. That will just cause a lot of headaches because you end up binge watching a lot of webinars and you just be stressed out the whole time trying to make sure that you meet the requirement in such a short time. Oh, on a side note, ISE Square can sponsor you if you don't know anyone in the industry with an ISE Square membership which is the route that I took. Hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. If you're studying, good luck. Keep on trying. You will make it. Just push through. If you have any questions, please put it in the comment section below. Thank you again. Have a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye.